Exploitation Section Exhibitors Trade Review March 11th, 1922 In a recent issue, we told you how Manager Goldman of the Missouri Theater made St. Louis sit up and take notice at a complete telephone switchboard, including operators, he rigged up in his lobby for Paramount's Saturday Night. It sounded fishy, but CN is believing. Art panels outside of the Criterion, New York, used to put over the atmosphere of First National's Red Hot Romance. Painted in striking colors on a dark background, they were not only artistic in appearance, but they carried the theme of the feature to a marked degree. Making a window attract even more attention at night than during the day was a feature of the cleverly planned exploitation campaign that was carried out by the Ogden, Ogden, Utah, for Fox's Over the Hill. In addition to windows, they also put banners on the front of streetcars, as shown in the insert. If there was anybody in Portland, Oregon who passed the Rivoli and did not know that First National's Her Mad Bargain was the attraction, they either needed the services of an occultist or else they should have attended night school for one night more and learned how to read. There was no excuse for not knowing it. This is the stamping machine that was used in Paris for Paramount's Lilane, the name under which your old friend the Gilded Lily is known to Parisians. It imprints letters into the ground with a calcimine finish and made quite a hit in Paris. A big hand pointing an accusing finger was the dominant note of the lobby display used by manager cuts of the Columbia, Seattle, Washington, for United Artists Gonces I Accuse. The pointing finger was used in all of his advertising and attracted attention where otherwise it would have been overlooked. This is the ambulance used by manager Hartman of the Rialto, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, for Fox's A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. It is certainly way out of the beaten paths of exploitation stunts. The auditorium, Pocatello, Idaho, got out a ballyhoo for Paramount's Forever that consisted of a Ford truck encased in beaver board and covered with six and three sheet posters. Inside was a player organ with its motor connected to the rear wheels of the car, so that it played continuously. The Liberty, Newark, New Jersey, put out a horseman dressed in complete Indian regalia for Pathé's serial White Eagle, who rode through the school districts just as the children were coming out for the noon hour. It got the kiddies so interested that the principal of the school had trouble getting them back to their classes. Warner Brothers' Why Girls Leave Home was given a big impetus in Flint, Michigan by manager Garfield of the Orpheum, through the medium of attractive window tie-ups. This shows a neatly arranged window of a store devoted to women's apparel, in which an announcement card that forms a small background is bound to be seen. Two more of Garfield's windows for Warner Brothers' Why Girls Leave Home. On the left, the window is devoted entirely to the attraction and the song, while on the right is a small window standing in the center of the entrance of a department store that everyone must pass in both entering and leaving the store. Another one of Garfield's windows for Warner Brothers' Why Girls Leave Home. Among the rugs displayed in it, the big framed still in the background and the small card in the corner stand out very strikingly and are probably the first things that catch the passer's eye. Manager Haas of the TD&L Strand, Pasadena, California, staged a parade for associated exhibitors, a sailor-made man, that, headed with a 30-piece military band, marched through the principal business streets of the city. The illustration shows some of the participants. These are some of the red-haired maidens and matrons that accepted the invitation extended by Hope Hampton, the star in First National's Stardust to attend a red-haired party that was held in one of the newspaper offices in Washington, D.C. during her appearance at the Metropolitan Theater. Manager Mossert of the Rialto, Glen Falls, New York, landed a coffee shop window for a display for Paramount's The Woman God Changed. He changed the window to depict a scene from the picture with cutouts and a few toy structures. A retouched poster completed the display. A bridge of size setting, two singers, a lyric soprano and dramatic contralto, in picturesque Venetian costume, a gondola and a gondolier, provided the beginning of the prologue which Enrico Lied of the Howard, Atlanta, used for Paramount's Peter Ibbotson. The girls sang the baccarole from The Tales of Hoffman. The manager of the Mojeska, Milwaukee, wandered away from the usual in exploiting First National's Molly O, and rigged up an old fire engine, based on one of the comedy scenes in the picture, where Mabel Normand races a bicycle in front of the speeding fire engine. In addition to this ballyhoo, they also used a girl imitator of Molly O on the streets. Without marring the beauty of its lobby, The Sun, Omaha, Nebraska, achieved a notable display for Fox's Queen of Sheba at a nominal cost. In every vantage point in the spacious lobby, they placed either framed posters or stills that blended with its decorations.